revisiting Darwin's history at the wharf and going fishing in its wetlands, it was time for a change of pace. I went for a drive out of the city to see what else this side of Australia has to offer. The Northern Territory is known for cattle stations and outback. I've got my four-wheel drive with bull bars in it and I'm ready to explore the bush. Finally, I made it to Oki Downs, one of many cattle stations across Australia's outback. Well, this is uh, going to be my home here in the cattle station. I've got my Akubra hat and uh, this is the place where I learn more about what life is all about here in the Northern Territory. Cattle stations such as this one are very common in the outback due to the wide grazing spaces available. Because of this, Australia has some of the largest cattle farms in the world. I met up with Sue, who owned and ran the cattle station. Together with some playful companions, we drove to the fields where she has 17 horses to feed that afternoon. In the morning they get hard feed like grain. Okay. And then at night... You feed them oats? I remember I used to feed my horses some oats and some... No, not so much oats because um, it's too hot. Yes. And it makes them really hot and energetic. and So yeah, they get a, quite a mixture of, of different things. You're gonna have to get this yeah, sure. for me. Yeah, sure. I'll open it for you. With a very big area, Sue also gets to train horses and give riding lessons. So in this paddock, and you can't see it right now because it's the wet season, we have a big horse obstacle course. So we do um, like ex extreme cowboy riding for over um, bridges and seesaws and swimming in the dam. And Being a horse owner myself back in the day, it felt very good to be back in the paddocks. I was happy to give Sue a hand in feeding the horses. So basically, we just throw them as far as we can. Throw it out into the paddock. Okay. There you go, boys. That wasn't yeah. too far. <laughs> That's all right. And then get another one. Yep. And walk up a bit further and throw it over the fence as well so they don't fight. Some of the horses here are wearing horse rugs, just like human clothes. They're meant to protect the horses from insects and sunbirds. So Sue plants everything here, even what they eat and what they're going to do for tomorrow. I was curious why she chose a life out here in the outback. I've been riding all my life. Yeah. But uh, really got started here by accident. I was a firefighter before this for 17 years. And um, still had horses, but firefighting was my career. And then I broke my knee. That's serious. Yeah, so I jumped off my fire truck and, and broke my knee, basically. Oof. So I had to look for something else to do, so I went back to my passion. Yes. And Oki's grown like it was only supposed to be a little thing. Yes. It made me wish I had this much space when I had horses. I'm sure if I was here, I'd have several horses too. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got lots of land here to ride on, so we've got 300 acres here, and then we've got another 5,500 out of that. Well, it's a totally different lifestyle here. Yeah. I'm beginning to enjoy it already. Yeah, it's a great lifestyle. <laughs> I love it. After making sure all the horses were well fed, we hopped back in the truck to see more of the cattle station. It's amazing how the dogs enjoy doing this as well. I love it. And they chase kangaroos. Sue took me to the top of the mountain, where we could admire the view of the vast landscape. Sue, what a nice view. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is. So that's uh, Adelaide River. Runs along those hill um, ridge lines down there. Yes. And then that goes out to the sea. It gets bigger as it goes out that way. See the end of the world. It was a really warm day, so we passed by a large pond to let the dogs cool off. We even met one of Sue's friendly water buffaloes on the way down. She knows you. Yeah. <laughs> All around the area, we found these tall structures standing upright. These are termite mounds, magnificent feats of engineering in the insect world. Yeah, they're pretty big. Um, well, they're actually as deep under the ground as they are on the outside. 
And these ones are called uh, cathedral out ant mounds because they're shaped like you know, a yeah. cathedral church. And they have, they're this shape so they can avoid the sun and the weather. Oh, okay. So at any given time of the day they can move around to be out of the direct sun. That's a smart way of doing yeah. it, huh? These termites, no bigger than a grain of rice, team up by the millions to create these mega cities moving more than 500 pounds of soil and water to make these incredible structures. Very interesting how all these things come to yeah. what it is today. Huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it all, I guess it all, you know, builds together to make one big ecosystem and we're lucky to live in it. Being close to nature, away from the stresses of city life, really gives you a good perspective of our place in this world. The next morning, I got up early to help with some of the farm work. You might want to throw bigger handfuls in that. <laughs> oh, more, more for them. Okay. Nice farm uh, free range eggs <laughs> every oh, yeah. morning. Beautiful eggs. <laughs> Sue invited me to do horseback riding and a roundup. As the Australians say, muster some of her cows. I, I just give it a try. Right. Maybe the cows will muster me the <laughs> other way around. <laughs> we made our way to the horse paddocks, and I wasn't even finished closing the gate when the horses came up to us to say hi. Here's your horse. <laughs> she came to you. After giving both horses a quick brush, it was time to saddle up. Admittedly, putting the saddle on the horse is harder than it looks, but Sue and I managed to do it just fine. Next, I had to get her comfortable with me first go, and go. see how she responds let's go, to my let's commands. Go. Let's go. You feeling confident? Yeah, she's, she looks more manageable than the other one. She, she's a good girl. Once I actually got on the horse, it was good to get the feel of riding back into my system. Some of them are really bumpy, but some are really smooth. Yeah, exactly. She's very smooth. Yes. Yeah. to look like a cowboy. With a few more pointers from Sue, I was ready to accompany her in herding the cattle. Riding horseback in warm weather with my Australian hat made me feel like a cowboy in a western. Cows are usually let loose to graze within the station, but sometimes there is a need to muster them into a small area. <laughs> Mustering can be difficult and may take several hours. There's also the danger of the cow suddenly charging at us. I have never done this before, so it was a good thing Sue knew exactly what she was doing. Herding the cows to a fenced area isn't easy to do alone. So I was lucky that they were on their best behavior. With a bit of help from the dogs, we have mustered every last one of the cows. The boy dies. Good job. Thank you very much. That was great. High five. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was great. <laughs> Darwin showed me how even after complete devastation, there's always hope for a new beginning. There are treasures of all shapes and sizes hidden in plain sight. And even a simple life far from the big city can be the most beautiful. This has been your captain, Joy Roa. See you in the next Asian Air Safari.